Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the Sunday garden question and answer video that I have uh, do most Sundays. The first Sunday of every month, I actually do a subscriber Sunday video where subscribers send in photos. If you're interested in sending in photos for that, uh, the email address is right here. Just uh, name the email subscriber uh, Sunday photos or subscriber photos or something like that so that I can differentiate. Um, I don't know where we are in the month. I probably have one more question and answer video uh, before uh, the uh, March first uh, subscriber Sunday video. So um, a couple more weeks and we'll, we'll, we'll see all the subscriber photos. I've already got quite a few uh, for, for the March video. So thanks everyone for participating in that. Also thanks to everyone for participating in the Corona pruner uh, giveaway uh, from, uh, from last week. If you saw that uh, video, um, I'm giving away three pairs of Corona pruners in this video from comments that were made uh, last week. And uh, the winner, I'll, I'll do the drawing for the uh, YouTube winner at the end of this video. Um, I already did the uh, drawing for the Instagram winner and the Facebook winner. And I'll just show you how I do these drawings uh, uh, for the Facebook winner at the end. So you can see it's just a random comment picker. Uh, that's a, uh, it's actually a website uh, that allows me to pick a ran just pick randomly uh, from uh, all the part participants. Thanks for all the comments. All the comments are always great. And uh, um, again, thank you guys for uh, watching and uh, participating in all these, all these things on the channel. It all helps grow the channel. Um, the Instagram winner for the uh, Corona Pruners is uh, Amanda Real Estate. Uh, and the uh, Facebook winner is uh, Gary Beckman. And uh, so uh, if you'll send me an email to this email address right here uh, with your uh, shipping address, I'll get that over to Corona. Corona actually sends them out directly. And again, I'll announce the Facebook winner at the end of this uh, question and answer video. Uh, in the month of March, I've kind of decided, uh, I'm, I've been doing these Sunday videos, which will continue the question and answer videos. And I've been doing a weekly Wednesday update video from this yard. And it has a lot of things kind of thrown uh, into a mix of anything from vegetable gardening to planting. If you haven't been following along with those, you know, you can see the progress of all this landscaping uh, in this yard on a week to week basis. Uh, but I have kind of decided that I need to make some really simple videos for this channel. I tend to overthink uh, everything and I don't, you know, I'm going to have some videos uh, coming up that are just how to do this, how to do that, basic, really short videos. Uh, those of you who have watched me for a long time may not be interested in some of those just really simple, quick uh, hitting topics, but I think they'll be good for my channel uh, over the long haul to have just you know, how to do this, how to do that, how to do this, um, and just have a one topic short video. Uh, I think I'll gain, uh, the channel will gain from it, uh, but it may not, you know, those of you who've been following me two or three years, it may be some of the regurgitated information. Uh, anyway, but you'll see that you're going to see some really simple, you know, three minute, hopefully three minutes. Sometimes I talk for too long, like I'm doing right now. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'll, again, let's get to the questions from this past week. There are a ton of questions. I can't possibly do all of these that were asked last week uh, in a single video. So if I don't get as many questions and you can ask questions down below this video, that's how I pick from those next week. Uh, if I don't have enough on this week's, um, then I'll go back and grab some of those. There's a ton of questions back there. They were a lot of great questions, really. Uh, but again, I'm trying to keep the videos a uh, halfway reasonable length. Let's do the questions. And then, like I say, I'll pull the Facebook winner at the end of this. Um, somebody had planted a, uh, their lemon tree. They, they took like a one gallon lemon tree and put it into a much larger pot. And they used a miracle Grow uh, potting soil and uh, it's defoliating uh, you know that can be several things but then i'm going to tell you what it probably is I, I talked about in last week about potting up from a small pot into a great big pot that you're more apt to drown them uh, and then i think you combine that with potting soil um, that that's another problem uh, your uh, a lemon tree is a woody plant and it probably is not going to want to sit in any kind of wet potting soil for any length of time and so if you're, plant, if you're transplanting something that's just like a woody shrub or a slower growing thing, whether it's in your house or outside, make sure that if, if you're using potting soil, come back and add some perlite or uh, some pine bark soil conditioner or something to it to allow it uh, to drain a little bit better. I just think that's too heavy, wet, heavy, wet potting soil, especially when you take a small plant and put it into a big pot, you're more apt to drown it. I do not like, and this is not me picking on Scott's or miracle Grow or anything else, I do not like fertilizer combined into my potting soil. I just don't like it. I, I don't trust it. I don't trust that the bags didn't sit around for a long time and all the fertilizer is gonna dump immediately when I plant my plant. 
Uh, you know, it sits in the sunlight out on the parking lot at the, at the box store. You know, I don't know if that had some impact on how the fertilizer is going to release. Uh, and is it the right time of year to even be fertilizing? Like, like if you bought the miracle Grow potting soil in, in, in April and it's time to fertilize, great. If you buy it in uh, September and you're fertilizing your plants uh, at the same time you're using the potting soil, that's not a good time to fertilize. So I just don't like it in general. Buy the fertilizer and the potting soil separately. And uh, if you're planting slower growing woody things, amend your potting soil uh, with either perlite or pine bark soil conditioner if you can find it, you know, and, and create some additional drainage. I think that's the issue. Um, somebody had bought some of those evergreen Stelladora daylilies um, that I had showed on the channel last year and just wanted to uh, uh, know the spacing on them. The ones I planted last year are probably a foot wide already. So I would think about a foot apart, um, foot to eight, 18 inches probably. Within a couple years, they'd probably be pretty well filled in. Um, somebody asked me about using a bare systemic insecticide and would it hurt uh, pollinators. If you're going to use a systemic insecticide for like something like roses, I think this is the question involved roses, if you have something you know the insects eat and you want to use a, uh, an insecticide and you know, you know, if you've watched my previous videos, I just typically don't. If something's, if something's getting eaten all the time, I'll tear it out and plant something else. But if I was going to, make sure you're using a granular um, uh, insecticide, uh, pre, uh, uh, a uh, granular systemic insecticide, meaning you can put the fur, you can, I think with that bare advanced granular is a, uh, it's got a slow release fertilizer and it has the insecticide and you just put it down at the bottom of the plant. So basically the plant wicks up the insecticide and anything that tries to chew on it gets killed. That way your pollinators and other things come along, um, they're not getting a dose of it. I don't think, I have no idea. I, I don't know if it's still in the flower. I have no, you know, uh, I say that, um, I, I think it's probably the safer of, you know, safer than spraying. Um, but I honestly don't know if that means they're still getting something out of the flower or not. I, I, I don't want to actually say that, I have no idea. But yes, a granular, something like that bare advanced, granular systemic insecticide, if I was going to use something, I would use that over using an open spray over the top of it where anything that lands on it could also be hurt. Um, let's see. Um, somebody talked about their weeping. They have a weeping cherry planted near the house. It's about 15 feet tall and are concerned about it just being too close to the foundation. Cherries are super aggressive rooting. That's a grafted. Your weeping cherries are grafted. And so the rootstock, I don't know if the rootstock will be as aggressive um, with a uh, weeping cherry. Um, attached to the top of it. I doubt it would be as aggressive as a, as a regular Yoshino cherry or something like that. But I don't think I'd want, I honestly don't think I'd want a cherry tree planted up against my house after seeing, uh, after 15 or 20 years of seeing how aggressive those roots were. I had roots on my uh, Kwanzaa cherry at the old house that were this big around that were running through my uh, irrigation boxes. Uh, just uh, super, super aggressive. They had taken pipes under the ground in my irrigation box and moved them around that kind of thing. Um, I'd probably get rid of it while I could. That, that, that's my answer. Um, somebody asked the best Japanese maple for a container uh, and they're in zone eight. Any weeping Japanese maple will be fine. I don't think you'll want a, uh, like a blood good. I don't think you want an upright Japanese maple. I think you want a cut leaf weeping Japanese maple. In zone eight in a container, you're definitely gonna want that thing in some shade and uh, if it were me and I'm in zone eight and I want to grow a Japanese maple in a container, I might get a green cultivar or a variegated cultivar and not get a purple foliage cultivar. I think you're going to be disappointed that the heat is going to be an issue every summer and they're going to, they're going to be leaf out beautifully and look beautiful. And then they're going to kind of be in that weird green purple stage and then kind of burnt edge leaves and that kind of thing. I get a green weeping cultivar and I think you would, uh, it would look good all season long hold up to the heat in zone eight a lot better. Okay, um, somebody asked me what my favorite plants are and uh, then narrowed it down to something for the sun, part sun and shade. And I have to tell you that all my favorite plants, not all my favorite plants, but most of my favorite plants bloom in the winter, you know, either in the fall, winter, or super, super early spring. And uh, I've said this before, being in this business for 30 years, winter is a lot of times the only time that you get to stop and kind of look around and so I've always loved things that flower in the winter. And so I'm going to say that osmanthus fragrance and all, just osmanthus in general are my favorite sun 
plants. Uh, they're holly-like plants, but they bloom with fragrant flowers in the fall and sometimes uh, again in the spring. I've got some osmanthus fragrance back here that are blooming right now. It's 27 degrees the last two nights. They still have flowers on them. They're still super fragrant this morning. Uh, camellias for part shade um, and just all camellias. I'm, I've always been enamored by camellias and there's thousands and thousands of named varieties and so you're constantly seeing new ones and you know that's just always fun every winter. Uh, seeing them everywhere. And then for a deeper shade, I'd probably say hellebores. Um, and they're my, you know, I, I love evergreen perennials, you know, really tough winter flowering evergreen perennial that most of you watching this can grow. Uh, so I'm gonna say those three, and then I'd probably change if you ask me again in 15 minutes. Um, somebody had bought some jewel box and purple daydream, uh, Laura Petalum. I happen to have them right here. I happen to have them right here. They had just bought some of these, wanted to know the spacing. These grow similar in size and width. That purple daydream, I covered purple diamond yesterday. Purple diamond can get about as tall as I am. And uh, this is purple daydream. It'll only get about waist high. And uh, this is that jewel box distillium, which I've also covered a few weeks ago. Um, both of these are gonna get, you know, in that three foot tall range, but they're gonna get wider than tall. So if you don't want them touching, you'd want them about four feet apart. If you want to create more of a hedge out of them, you could put them closer than that, three, three and a half feet. But uh, both of these, these are really good companion plants. So I, I thought that was a good choice when I read that. That's Purple Daydream, Laura Petalum, and Jewel Box Distillium. Uh, okay, um, somebody asked, uh, let's see. Somebody asked me about my favorite uh, butterfly bush. Um, I like those buzz butterfly bushes. I had a white one at the house, that white buzz uh, butterfly bush. Um, and it was just beautiful. It's a white one that was maybe uh, hip high every year, you know, maybe three feet and just loaded with flowers all summer long, super, super low maintenance. And, uh, but that's that buzz series of butterfly bushes. They're dwarfs. Uh, they'll creep up, you know, to four feet or so during the, during the season if you let them. But typically with butterfly bushes, I'll let them bloom heavily. And then sometime about the 4th of July, I'll cut them in half and uh, that controls the height and increases the number of flowers you have later in the summer. Um, somebody asked me uh, if I have a lot of house plants and if I overwinter any uh, tropicals. Um, I do have a goodly amount of house plants. I've beaten them up a little bit from these moves and I'm working on, um, on I've got this, e this extra room on, on the house over here where I'm doing my vegetables and that kind of thing has become the house plant room and I'm, it's got good light. So I'm rejuvenating, repotting, and working on that. I'll show you my house plants at some point in my succulent and uh, cactus collection. Uh, ask me, they also asked me in that same question about overwintering tropicals. No, I don't overwinter any tropicals, really. I've been spoiled in this business uh, because uh, I ordered them at the garden center, of course, wholesale, and so whatever I wanted for a hibiscus or whatever every year, diplodenia or whatever it was, I just grab them at the garden center and take them home. And then, you know, like I say, kind of spoiled i just got a new one the next year uh i probably need to now without the garden center to be thinking about uh overwintering things but no all the tropicals i've ever had have gone to the compost pile at the end of the season and only because like i say i was involved in the business and somebody would either give me one or are you eating grass again can you guys see that she's eating grass people don't want to see you eat grass every sunday that's not a thing people want to see but I love you. Okay, I don't know if you guys, it, Holly's back to eating grass over here again. Um, so I think, um, oh, one more here. Um, the bronze, uh, somebody asked me about putting a bronze beauty Clara into a container. The only question I would have is what zone you're in. I think that bronze, that bronze beauty Clara would look good as a container plant and pretty much any Clara would look good as a container plant. But if you're in zone seven, I think it would might uh, winter freeze and uh, be an issue. If you're in zone eight or nine, no problem at all. You could leave it outside in the winter time. But like I say, in zone seven, you'd have to winter protect it. Um, but uh, I do, a clay arrow would make a great container plant. So here's the uh, winner from the uh, YouTube uh, drawing for the uh, Corona pruners. And again, thanks to Corona, this is a really nice pair of uh, pruners. I will link this pair down below this video. And uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to ask questions down below and uh, I'll see you next weekend. Thanks. So here's the random comment picker and up here you just enter the video from last week 
and we want to filter out duplicate users and uh, then we hit get YouTube comments right there it loads all the comments there were 347 comments I hit the start button down here in the bottom left and it randomly selects a winner I'll move down to that so you can see it okay the winner is beech nut blooms so th again thanks to everybody for participating in the giveaway Uh, Holly, no, 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 no more eating grass. Okay, I got, I do not want a Holly eating grass video.